What's up, y'all? This is Elijah here from the Side Hustler Society podcast. And in this podcast episode, we're going to be talking about how to start a notary business and how to run it as a side hustle and potentially even turn it into a a full-time hustle or full-time self-employment job if you so desire. A notary business is one of those things that I'm pretty sure you've interacted with at some point in your life, but you probably don't actually know any details about it, like how to start, what uh, legal and lawful hurdles you need to jump through to start one, how much does it cost to start, what kind of supplies you need to have in your inventory on deck in order to be able to operate the business. Is this a stationary business where you have to have like this uh, office set up and you can only do stuff there? Or is it portable where you can kind of take things that you need with you and you can conduct business on the go while you handle other issues in life? (laughs) To be honest, I have these same questions because I don't know that much about the notary business. I do know that it can be a pretty lucrative if you do start one. So that's why I'm really excited to uh, be interviewing Mark Ciaz. Mark is a Florida native who enjoys adventure, growing tropical fruit, and adding value to the lives of others. He worked in critical care for 15 years, and he dabbled in pro wrestling for a season, learning under Stephen Cowra at Florida Championship Wrestling. In 2019, he quit his nursing job to start his own unique legal services business, Noble Notary and Legal Document Preparers, and digital download site that offers Ladybird D preparation. This continues to thrive and grow to this day. And in 2022, alongside his wife of 15 years, they wrote the book, A Golden Pen, about their business model that is low overhead, low inventory, and high demand and high markup. They began coaching, inspiring entrepreneurs to replicate their methods, eventually creating a course called Notary Prosperity Academy. They place an emphasis on letting profits drive you into new growth and expansion by adding additional side hustle services to your business plan. So let's go ahead and get into the show. Welcome to the Side Hustler Society podcast with your host, Elijah Bilal. This is where you can find out more about hustles that are best for you. And of course, make more money in the process. Elijah has been in the gig economy and freelance space for over five years and has done over 3,000 deliveries on Uber Eats. He's an Airbnb super host, runs multiple YouTube channels, and is the author of the best-selling book, The Anatomy of Financial Success. It's his mission to empower people with the tools needed to be successful. Now, welcome your host, the king of side hustles, Elijah Bilal. Okay, Mark, we are on. How are you doing today? I'm good, Elijah. You know, as soon as we get off, I'm going to go get on Amazon and get that book of yours. So. <clears throat> oh, uh, you kind of uh, read my mind because I know you have a book of your own. So I, I had planned on doing that too. So I guess we'll be exchanging. <laughs> Touche. <clears throat> One little bit of information from someone can change things for you very quickly. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a, a quote that uh, this uh, tutor that um, I knew when I was in high school had told me. He's a very successful man. And he said, uh, the thing about books is even if you get like one applicable thing in like this 30 page, uh, 300 page book, it alone is worth it if it changes your life. That's why you always want to read books. Absolutely. I mean, Solid advice. I can speak for my. Well, do I need to even preach books? You got to yeah. stand there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but speaking of, uh, well, not so much books and record keeping, but uh, on the notary tip, I'm actually pretty excited to have this discussion because the notary business is something that people are familiar with because they needed it at some point, but they're not familiar in the sense of they probably don't know how to start one how to make a business successful in it. But if you do, it's a lot of opportunity. Like when people think about a side hustle, they start thinking about the Uber to lift the door that stuff, which is fine. And then they start thinking about, well, maybe a graphic designer or a plumber or something like that. And that's cool too. But I think uh, a notary business is very underrated in my opinion. They're like, no Um, one thinks of it, even though it can be pretty lucrative. That is, you know, you, you nailed it. I, I even was guilty of that, too. Um, when I first thought of the idea, I really wasn't sure what was going to happen with it. 
I kind of thought it was ridiculous because my perception of a notary was the person you come to to have some paper for the bank or whatever done and you pay them 10 bucks. There can't be any money in it. It's like an add on to your other business you might have. It just, I've never really given it much thought. And other than I know that it's something that people inevitably just need. And when you need it, you need it. So it's not like you have to sell somebody on your service. They just have to know that you in fact offer that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, one of my friends, he had just recently told me like when he was uh, buying a car, they required uh, him to get something notarized. And when he went to the uh, notary, uh, he said that um, uh, they, they could have worked. They they were nice. I don't want to say they were nice. It could have played out to where like they actually could have got a percentage of the sale. And I was kind of like, oh, wow. I didn't even know that was a thing. So I'm looking at it from both sides. Like there's actually a lot of opportunity if you uh, know what you're doing. Yes. Yes, there is. If you can um, if you can find the uh, the there's a lot of different avenues that you can you can play out with a notary business and we'll talk about them. Um, but uh, on the surface, um, you have a stamp, you know, you have a, a little rubber. This one's my pocket one. So I bring that to church with me and everything because you never know, man. You always keep it on you because you never know when somebody's going to. So that's your version of a, having a, a square reader, like so you can take payments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we got that too. Reader. But um, yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. So that is your, you know, that's it. Like this is this is your business. I mean, this is the key piece of it. Yeah. You want printers and stuff. And we'll, we'll talk about that, why I have that stuff, but this is the most important piece and you want to have more than one. You want to have a, a couple of them because you don't want to lose one. Find yourself out of business. Yes. <laughs> so that is it. Essentially what a notary is doing is they're authenticating a signature on something. So they're saying that this person did in fact, was in fact here, they were this person. And you know, now there's a, different tiers of it. There's oaths, there's jurats, acknowledgements. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. It's all, that's all pretty rudimentary, but the short story is you are witnessing their signature after they show you an ID and then you counter witness it and stamp and charge for it. It's, there's no physical labor involved whatsoever. You know, as someone that in my early twenties, I did do a, a lot of manual labor jobs like at Amazon and warehouses. I've been able to sit down and just stamp something. I'll take that any day of the week easily. And uh, we Where actually kind of answered, up, right? we kind of answered the question of what is a notary. That's actually a great uh, summary of what a notary is. So a lot of people's like next question would be like, um, what's the origin story of like noble notary and legal document uh, preparers? Like how did that get started for you? Well, so that's a great question. So I, as, as you said in the intro, I am a nurse and uh, was working in critical care, which is about the high, it's the highest pay. And it's also the most stressful uh, of nursing. And I wanted to take a break from that. So I took a break from it, tried to do some businesses. They weren't working very well. Um, and in that interim, I got a, uh, a home health job, which is basically a visiting nurse is what they would call it. So you go visit people at their uh, residence to take care of them. Now, it doesn't uh, pay very good. Um, and I kept thinking, is there something that I could do in people's residence like this where I could get in and out in a matter of minutes and it paid better than this? There's got to be something. There's got to be something. And I just mulled it over for a while. And one day, you know how it is when you wake up one day and you're like, that's it. If yeah. I get a yeah, notary stamp, aha moment. Say, right, an aha moment. Yep. And I wasn't sure it was going to work, but I knew that it, in Florida, it's like $100 to get a notary commission. It costs nothing. You take a couple hour test, send in your stuff, and that's it. You get your stamp, you're in business. So it literally costs, I mean, you could start the, my entire business model is run out of a home office with less than a thousand dollars in equipment. So if that's not right, that's the definition of a side house. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so the story is I just put up a Google listing and that mobile notary will come to you and it took right off. Um, now down that road, I learned to make more connections, to make more money, more money. So when I say it took off, I mean, it was very viable. It was better than my nursing income. So I immediately 
immediately just was like, no more home health. We're not going to do that anymore. This is way easier. It did work. Uh, but then, of course, as you you want to know, how can I make this bigger and better and have more revenue streams? And how I did that was uh, two ways. One is um, I took that business model that we have, that idea of low overhead, low inventory, low startup. Pretty easy to learn. It does not take much to learn to witness signatures. It's not a lot involved there. Um, so what else can I do along that, along those lines that would offer that same quick cash, you know, high demand, quick cash. You don't really have to sell. And I started looking at other things that are similar and kind of gradually incorporating those in, into my business. Um, we'll talk about some of those too, if you want. Uh, so that is kind of how I started to build it out. Once you navigate those waters of marketing your business, you know, getting the website up, getting, making these connections, it becomes very easy to start adding on other services, especially if those services are very similar or very adjacent or kind of serve the same clientele. And that's the, that is the essence of it. Hmm. To your question. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It does. Uh, you actually answered a few questions in that. Uh, Cause, uh, I knew starting a notary business would be uh, kind of cheap, but um, yeah, for the amount that you mentioned, like that's a great deal. Wow. And um, as yep. far as like any uh, legal or lawful hurdles you got to jump through to uh, get started, you know, it's not like a bunch. You mentioned the test, which you got to study for and pass. And uh, yeah, is, was there anything else that you need to officially start? Technically, no. I mean, you can do this under being a self-employed, you know, so you can and you can contract with vendors that are more or less like a headhunter, kind of the same way that Uber works. Right. So think, oh, think of Uber Hunter and they come out and get you with it. There's the same thing in notary. Now, that's not where the big bucks are, but that's where there's a lot of money to be made. If you want to, like I always tell people start your business. In other words, get it going as fast as possible so that there's money and you don't have that because we know people like to, people quit things. You know, if it don't start working yeah. re real soon, they kind of give up on it. So I tell people like, you know, jump start it, get a jump start, go out and get like I have my personal inventory or spreadsheets of clientele. I probably have over 200, you know, vendors like like Ubers, Uber, Lyft, and there's a couple, probably a couple others like that. I've got over 200 of them. So my phone's always ringing or I'm getting texts or whatever from them. And what's nice is it, it probably, it works the same way with other business models is I can pick and choose. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. If it doesn't, it sounds like a bad deal. I don't take it. But to give you an idea, those vendors, they're usually paying uh, anywhere from 50 to $200 for you to go run out and take care of paperwork for them. So you don't have to do a lot of those in the day before it becomes a really good day. So, uh, and now that's just the, mo that's just mobile notary. That isn't talking about ligaments or apostilles, which some of the other things we do, which I'll be glad to talk about all that too. It all kind of fits under that notary umbrella that I offer. So. Yeah. Well, feel free to feel elaborate free to on that. Cause like you, you got yep. me and the audience interested. Good. So you get a notary commission in whatever state you're in. Most states, it's a breeze. It's like a one day thing. Now, there are some states like California and New York uh, where there's would more be of a class states. you have. To yeah, it would be. Yep. There's like a, I think Ohio too, they actually have like a, a, a study, but most of the states, it's a, it's an, like an online thing, fill out an application, submit um, bonding is what they, some states will require you to have what's called a bonding and basically like insurance. So um, those are, are highly recommended. I wouldn't say necessary, especially if you are just doing mobile notary for yourself, not necessary, but I would recommend them because as I talked about having a surplus of different contractors and headhunters looking for you, they're going to want to know that you have that stuff um, mm -hmm. available. That makes them feel better about doing business with you. So uh, that is um, how you would get started in it. What you really need to know is that as a notary, you're witnessing and you're verifying IDs and you cannot lie. OK, that is the you have one job. Do not lie. Right. <laughs> and if, if the state finds out you lie, you're in big trouble. So that's your one job is you're just truthful. Hey, I saw them sign this. They showed me ID. Boom. That is notary 
in its, you know, in, in its essence, it's your main piece of equipment is your stamp. If, obviously, if you're doing it mobile, you want a car, but most people already have that. Um, if you're going to be doing extensive document packages, car loans or vehicle loans or whatever, you're going to want printers and scanners and stuff. But again, you can go all in full office, the desk, the chair I'm in, everything, I think under a thousand dollars, definitely under 2000 by far. And you don't have to have it all at once anyway. So kind of, you kind of buy your way in as you go. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, you could, uh, as you start making money from the business, you can just reinvest those profits into, you know, getting more supplies, more equipment until you have everything you need, then boom, you're, you're fully in the red there. I mean, fully in the black. Yes, absolutely. Very, very quickly. So for me to put it in context, um, within the first month without any of those vendors or doing any of that stuff or doing the apostilles, which I'll talk about in a second, without doing any of that stuff, just me saying, and, and I'm in Port Orange, Florida. So if people wonder where I'm at, I have a population of around 30,000 in our town. And then the county I'm in, Volusia County, a population of a million. So you're not talking about a crowded, it's not, it's, this isn't a population density, but it's also not a ghost town. So probably if you're in a ghost town, don't expect to make six figures unless you're doing a lot of online, which we'll talk about that too. Um, but you do have, so I do have, I'm a, I would say an average population county or neighborhood in Florida. Um, and with that, in the first, I would say two or three months, I was pulling a six, six figure revenue of just going to people's houses and stamping stuff for them or nursing homes or hospitals. And uh, from there, I added, started adding doing the loans and I started doing the apostilles and all these other things. And it went up, it got to where I was so busy. I took my wife on as a partner. I'm like, look, go get a notary stamp. Come do this with me. It's the easiest thing in the world. I'm, I'm losing money by <clears throat> turning away clientele. And so come do this with me. <clears throat> oh, that's beautiful. I mean, it, it fits in the realm of uh, good problems to have. Like as Robert Kiyosaki said in his, uh, in his uh, investing book, you got like two kinds of problems. You have the problem of not enough money and the problem of too much money. And everyone forgive me, but it was actually increase your financial IQ. That's the book. Uh, which problem do you want? Do you want not enough or do you want too much? I want the problems of having too much money because uh, they're easier to solve. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. You can make, you can make that money disappear. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is another part of my business is that we do taxes, but that's another story too. But, um, that's another thing we added on, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's been great and, uh, we just continue to expand. Basically I, that same, like I said, that same idea of, well, this was easy to do and what goes along with it. And one of the things that we started offering was what's called an apostille and, probably never heard that word before i mean most people haven't but it is one of these things that if you offer it the people who need it need it and there aren't there's no competition like the next guy that does apostilles around me is next county over i mean there's just no competition so an apostille is essentially taking a notarized document or some other kind of document that's going to leave the country and it has to be channeled through the secretary of state and it's a bit of a um there's hoops to jump through and most people just don't understand that process. It's not complicated, but you're also dealing with somebody who's also probably a foreigner. That's why they have documents that are going to another country. So they really don't know. So you charge them a one flat fee, set it and forget it. You bring your documents to me. You'll have an apostille in a week. You don't have to worry about it and they'll pay whatever you're asking. And it's completely unregulated. So they, there's no there's no cap on what, and I don't rip people off. I charge $225, but I charge them a fair price. I have a courier that is making sure that they're walking it into the secretary of state for me. And then they're expressing it back to me. So I can guarantee a turnaround time of less than a week. Usually people who want one of those documents are in a hurry. So right, right. Uh, I tell me a few choices, right? <laughs> Drive to Tallahassee <laughs> or give me $225 and you'll have it in a couple of days. So, and then yeah. a that will around 125 of it for a 15 minute transaction. Crazy. And like that scenario that, that just happened yesterday. <laughs> so that happens all the time. It happens every week. So every week there's somebody strange as it seems, there's somebody who is selling a property in the Philippines or they're trying to um, export 
pat themselves to like Belize or something. It just happens all every day. So, and if you, the more of these types of things that you have in your, we'll say notary umbrella, the more revenue you're constantly, not, you can just pick and choose what I want. What's the easiest money I can make today? You know, so. Yeah, it kind of, kind of seems similar to personal training in that regard. I've had a personal trainer on the show before and he kind of described it like, once you get like a base round certification of being a certified personal trainer, there are other programs that you could uh, become certified in that allow you to work with the elderly or, you know, uh, help people recover yeah. from injury, use different certifications. And it's kind of, like, it sounds like the notary is kind of similar, not necessarily the certification, but like yeah. the, once you get the baseline, you can start offering additional services that fit within the notary umbrella. Yes. You know, some pay more or some you can Absolutely. accomplish faster. Huh. Uh, I think I'm speaking for the rest of the audience when I say that people probably aren't even thinking about any of this. They're thinking about the, oh, I need to get this document notarized and, you know, I'll just pay someone 10 bucks. They're not thinking about any of the stuff that you just talked about. That's where, like I said, I focus on a notary business model rather than just being a notary. Uh, I, I mean, I go to church with a bunch of people who are notaries and none of them are driving a Land Rover into church. So uh, they, you know, what are you doing as, a, and they always ask, what are you doing as a notary? I'm like, well, it's a little bit more complex than that, but it's not outside the realm of anybody to learn. You just have to take, you have to peel back the layers and look and go, oh, okay. And like for the apostilles, I, I read a book on it, you know, got it on Kindle. Um, uh, something like the apostille agent survival guide, you know, five bucks. Read it in one day was like, Done. Got it. Add it to the add it to the Google listing, you know, and there it is. Sure enough. So um, we do. So along those lines, we do fingerprinting like we'll do we'll ink card fingerprinting and that costs nothing in most states and requires almost no certification in most states. It's crazy. I mean, they will say so fingerprinting, they will want a public official to sign off. So usually the, on the fingerprint card, it'll say the official who's done this print. Now you are a public official as a notary, so you can take their fingerprints. You've verified their ID. You can roll their fingerprint. Just make sure you're doing it right. Because if it, if you smudge it, they're going to be mad at you. So, but that isn't as hard as that sounds. Okay. That is like, it's like, I think about like learn to write as a kid. Eventually you just get it to where I, okay, I can write. Um, it's the same with doing fingerprints. It's you practice it a few times and then it's like, okay, I got it. There's a trick to it. And you can charge people a hundred dollars to roll their prints on a card. They have to have it. It's usually for a job or it's for a background check or it's like gentleman's leaving the country and he had this, he had to have them done. He had to have somebody do it. Uh, the police departments do do it, but they don't like doing it. And they're very front with, with people that we'll get like in, in my communities, the police department pretty much says, we'll get to you when we get to you. So this could be an all day project for you where, 50 bucks, I'll get you done in 15 minutes, you know? So uh, it's mm -hmm. again, what kind of, well, what's your time worth? So it's a convenience thing. And we you know people pay for convenience all day. That's what, that's like the S DoorDash is a convenience, you know, it's billions of dollars. So nicely put. So we've already kind of branched off into this, but like you, that was a good example of like how uh, you monetize the notary business by using other services within it they complement like the notary business do you uh, have you want to go into yeah. it further like are there other things that you know you got the fingerprint and yes. you got the notary are there any other yeah. like services you can kind of circle around it to where you absolutely. do this search yeah yes absolutely so one of our good revenue stream what we go call conducting loan closings or being a closing agent and it sounds complicated as well like the apostilles it sounds like a closing agent you are basically doing the exact same notary work. You're just printing the papers, bringing the papers to the client, and they are either buying a property, selling a property, refinancing a property, or they have a new built property. It's some kind of real estate transaction. They have to have a notary that does it. The way the notary laws work are that people who have a vested interest in that transaction can't participate in that transaction. So a real estate agency can't use the, a note, their notary because they have an interest in it. 
the bank, if they're lending the money, can't use their notary because they have an interest in it, right? <laughs> you know, if, if you're getting the commission on this, you might be a notary, but you can't put your seal on that because you have an interest in it. So you have to hire an independent closer. And the way most attorneys and title companies work is they are, they're very busy. And this is like, it's already kind of worked into the paper. Your fee already worked, already budgeted for you to go out and do this. So when you go out and you $150, go sign some paperwork, takes 30 minutes, maximum amount, it's really complex, uh, really good money. And your expense was the drive and the papers, that paper's cheap. So um, that's it. So, but that is another kind of, I guess I would say niche within the niche would be being a closing agent. Sometimes they call loan signing agent or a notary signing agent. These are all different words. They all mean the same exact thing. Um, and so mm -hmm. that is a very good revenue source for us as part of this. Uh, now, because we do other things that we're, I'm going to talk about, I am very choosy with those. Uh, excuse me. I'm very choosy with, with the load I will take. Um, because, so I know how to sift through ones that are going to be quick, easy money and ones that they might be more time consuming. And I've also learned what lenders are easy to work with and what title companies are easy to work with. So I may say no, just like 80, 20 rule. Like, uh, I don't know if you read Tim, Tim Ferriss or not, how he talks about, like, I had to cut some of the dead weight out work because it was, yeah, it was money, but it was just more time. Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it was like more bother than it's worth. They called it Pareto principle or something like that. So we've mm -hmm. kind of done that. Like we have a title company that we know it's nothing but a headache to go in there. So anytime they want us, and we also know that nobody else, none of none of our competitors want to work with them either. So we've got this inside <laughs> knowledge that nobody wants to go do your loan at your office. So you're going to have to pay me an astronomical fee. And it sounds crazy, but they will. They'll just cough it up because they don't have a choice. You know, but you shot yourself in the foot. But that's just an example of how you'll, you'll learn your local market and you'll learn what's really quick and easy to do. And can stack the debt paper pretty quickly by doing that. Um, we have uh, so we've added to our services. We've added you can be a wedding efficient as a notary in Florida. I think there's about five or six states you can be a wedding efficient. Um, even if it you're not, it's if it was a state where you had to be an ordained minister, that's super easy to do too. So <laughs> that's mm -hmm. about as easy as being a notary. Um, but in Florida, I can marry people as a notary, and so I do, and that is good money. Too, I usually charge a start fee of around two hundred dollars, and most of them are a half hour thing. Most of them are shotgun. I'm gonna tell you this: most people think, "Oh, a wedding! I wouldn't want to stand up in front of people." You know, two hundred people do this. Neither would I. But I'll tell you that the majority of them have never happened that way. The majority of them have been like, "We just decided we want to get married this week. Will you do it?" Yeah, two hundred bucks. Okay, <laughs> and that's it. So easy, <laughs> easy money. Um, and you just you're just reading vows and you can literally read them like I have a little uh, like a little notebook that I and I read the vows right off of it. I memorize them at this point, but I still have them there. And I could just it just looks like you're reading like a scripture or something to them. And it's great. Falls into that notary umbrella really well. Um, our most lucrative thing that we do is what's called Ladybird Deeds. And uh, so we own a site called ladybirddeed.net. I got mm -hmm. lucky that that name is available. Um, yeah, but a lady <laughs> I was wondering that, like, did you have to pay something to get there? Because it sounds like it would have been taken. It should have been taken. Probably eventually some attorney will offer me more money than uh, <laughs> enough that I would just be like, all right, it's yours. Um, but uh, <laughs> eventually some big firms can be like, we want that name, you know. Uh, so we'll see. But um, so ladybirds are, uh, they're just a deed that needs notarization. And it's designed to transfer property from inherit property. So it's designed to set up property inheritance without any interference from the government. And so they are wildly popular in Florida. They might not be, you know, I think there's about five different states that they are legal in. So other states may not have that, but they probably have something similar that you could capitalize on. So just because mm -hmm. they don't have a ladybird doesn't mean they don't have a transfer on death deed or something that people are just once they find out about it and they hear about it or you educate them on it, they're going to be chomping at the bit to get it done and they'll pay you good money to bring them those papers. So that's it. It's essentially 
essentially I'm at that point, I'm a high paid uh, secretary because I'm just typing information onto a piece of paper, giving it to you, witnessing your signature, stamping it, and then charging you $200 for something that took me, took me less than 30 minutes to prepare it. And whether we, I would you work it out with them, whether well, you want me to come to you and sign this, I'm going to charge you my note, my mobile notary fee, or, you know, there's the upsell, or you can come, you can just come right by my home office and we do it here. Either way, it ends up being really good money, really quick, really easy. Not a whole lot of, there's no no heavy lifting involved. Unlike the wrestling, there's no, no heavy lifting. So. <laughs> you know, um, this sounds like very administrative heavy. And one thing about administrative stuff is it sounds more complicated than it is. Like I'm kind of equating it to like when you're at home, you know, let, let's say, you say, I'm going to go change the locks on the door or something. And you're talking to like your friend on the phone or something. It sounds like that's a lot, but it only takes like five or 10 minutes to actually do. It's like two screws. Yeah. So exactly. It does. It sounds like, um, like, especially like doing loans, it sounds really intimidating, but if you strip away everything and that's the most complex thing I do would be doing a loan closing. So the other stuff, it is not complex at all. It is. It's very simple. But if you were to take the essence of doing a closing, a real estate closing, you are just getting people's signatures on paper. So just look, sign here and it goes smoother and faster the more familiar you are with those documents and what they entail. But that's not a requirement of the job. So if somebody was to ask you, you could be like, I don't know. Ask your realtor. <laughs> ask your lender. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not here to, to tell you this, whether this is a smart move or not. I'm here to say you did, in fact, sign this paper. It Again, it goes the better you are at knowing those, the faster you're in and out because you instill confidence in people and you get them to move through it. So it's in your best interest as a business owner to make that transaction as smooth and as quick as possible and as professional as possible. Because if you come across that way as you know, like it's very warm and very knowledgeable, you instill confidence. And then it becomes really easy for you to drop your card on them and say, oh, by the way, I do all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. so that's why. But no, it, it sounds worse than it is. It, it's, it's, it's a super simple business model. Um, the the at the beginning phase of it, the, the starting a mobile notary would be really hard to mess it up. You If you can create a Google listing and get a notary commission, your business. <laughs> I mean, that's the start. That's where you start right there. Cool. And you can do that. It, you, you, know, you can do that at any, any time of the day. You can do, if you don't want to do the weekends, don't do the weekends. If you want to do nights, do nights. You can, so I think about 30 states, you can do this online, Florida being one of them. So you could be a remote online notary, meaning that you don't ever have to leave your house. You can just beam somebody up and then do, you know, click their documents on the computer. So if you docu sign stuff for most of us have, you can do remote online or you could be a remote online notary. It's just like our thing here, just in the sidebar, there being a piece of paper that we have to click on. It's not that complicated and it's oh, still wow. pays good, So, Gotcha. Huh. So, so you like see how the, the notary umbrella starts. It's a big umbrella. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, big it umbrella. Really, it literally is an umbrella as opposed to just being like this one thing that, you know, most people just kind of picture. And, uh, I always say the riches are in the niches and you're adding several yes. niches in a umbrella so that I can see why all this is pretty profitable. Yes. It's so it become, it is, it, it's a, so my schedule, it's a revolving door. It's uh, it, one day I can, make, I, I would say I always make more than $500 a day, but one day could be $500 a day and another day could be $2,000 dollars and it's like holy cow that was cool but I, I never worked hard at any point in the day it was never like man i worked my butt off today it was like man i can't believe i made that much today it's kind of more of the sentiment so <laughs> it really depends i my my benchmark is always 500 a day and if i dip below that i go i look at my marketing and go all right well where do we need to bolster up which niche is not is not shining enough, you know, and then mm -hmm. go from there. But really it's not been an issue because there's so many different things that the general public that your, 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 your listing comes up. And so if they're looking to have fingerprints, boom, you're listing, they're looking to get married, boom, your listing pops up. If they're looking mm -hmm. to um, just get the, the $10 stamp, I mean, you'd be crazy. I just, just in the $10 stamps that 
people are coming to me. I'm not leaving my house. People are physically coming to me, $10 in stamps, cash in my pocket. I could do $200 in a day, just like that. Like it's crazy. And that's all cash. And the other crazy thing is, is that your notary work, your, your notary work. So anything that you do with your stamp, it's not subject to self-employment tax. So you knock that right off that you'll automatically reduce your tax load by 15%. I didn't Good to know. know. So, wow. So running the notary business, you're not subject to self-employment tax. I, I did not know that. Wow. Yep. So you automatically reduce your, so you, when you do your taxes, you calculate up your total number of notarizations and by the fee, whatever the state fee is, and then boom, drop that right, right off the bottom line. Wow. So, so literally just money in your pocket. So that's a 15.2 percent if i remember the exact percentage of the uh, self-employment tax uh you don't get hit with that oh man that's <laughs> audience that's a beautiful thing yeah that's self-employment tax it sounds like and you can look it, that up it sounds like i'm making it up but i do part of my business i do tax preparation so i'm not making that up <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, yeah I, I believe you i mean like that self-employment tax like i know people who are traders who would like do the Fordex or, you know, do the stock market thing. And, uh, you know, since they're not holding it that long, that the stock is gone within a day of them purchasing it, sometimes they'll get hit with a self-employment tax because they're not, quote, unquote, investing. They're considered personal, professional traders. So yep. when there's a business that you can uh, do and you're self-employed, but you don't get hit with that tax, that's just a huge bonus, man. It is. And you know this, that just business in general is better than, I mean, when I was working as a nurse, half my check was gone when I got it. You know, they were, they're charging me for all kinds of stuff. And with, Before you know, you just running a business. <laughs> yep. Yep. But running a business, it's opposite. I, I decide what was a business, which is almost everything. But, you know, I, I get to decide that rather than them just deciding, well, no, you owe us this. I get to decide, well, no, there was, there's parts of this, you know, you, you can allow, because I have a home office that except square space in my house and I operate out of it, there is a percentage of that is a deduction. So, so those are nice things to have in your favor, to tip the scale in your favor. Right, right. So we've already got into this kind of a heavily, but like, do you have some kind of a formula that you use to a price your notary services or the, uh, the different branches of your notary in terms of like stuff um, we have talked about. I, so I've done it for a while. So I've kind of, I like, like if I teach people, I just show them my price sheets and I say, Hey, charge what I charge because I know this works. Um, so in other words, I know what the market will bear. The short answer is charge where the market will bear, whatever people are willing to pay. Uh, and so if you're in a certain area, I would literally just call around and find out what others are charging. Uh, but no, I've kind of established them now. When it comes to uh, like the loans, for example, there's in, what, what we call industry standards. So the industry standard for certain transactions, like a purchase or refinance, is between 100 and 150. So that's kind of a standard. They just a title company calls you; they're expecting to pay that. Mm -hmm. And they also know that if it's quite a drive for you, or it's last minute, or there's some other nuance, they're going to expect that you're going to want more than that. So they they've allocated for that. So you learn some of that as you go, but yeah, there are certain things that are industry standards. And then there are certain things that you could make it up. Now I tell people to charge a flat initial fee for mobile notarization. And I tell them, don't leave your house for less than 50 bucks and charge outside of say a 10 mile, start charging a dollar a mile. That's fair. It covers your gas, covers your time. You make, you end up making good money off of it. So, but if you're just doing little, like if I'm doing a five mile radius, I'm not walking out my door for less than $50. So, and then it's additional, then it's per notarization. So if I come to you for $50 and it turns out you've got 10 things and I know that this sounds crazy. I have one of actually one of my students, um, she did, gosh, this was insane. She did like, I want to say she had to do a hundred notarizations for somebody like a stack of paper she's like right. well, what do i charge them i'm like well it's your business you charge them a flat fee but i just say but hey 500 bucks you're coming out ahead he has no choice he has no choice no bank in the world is going to sit there with him and go through every single piece of paper so she did it so she made all that money in 
like, and it was an hour, you know, I'm sitting there going through them, going through them, but you made all that money. He had no choice. So it happens. Mm -hmm. It happens with us. I've had people call and say, can you, my attorney wants every single page of this thing embossed. I'm like, all right, it's $10 a page. <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to listen to your attorney, I don't know why he wants that, but, and I'm not going to argue with it, but it's 10 bucks a page. <laughs> Let's go. Come on over here. I'll be happy to. <laughs> wow. But those okay. things happen. So. Right. Okay. And I um, wish they happen every day, but they happen. Yeah. And uh, some people may be wondering, I'm wondering the same thing, but um, uh, overall, this sounds like a low overhead business, but are, are there any like reoccurring expenses that people should know about when starting a notary business? Great question. So great question. So with uh, like specifically the loans, you have to keep, I go through a ream, a, a box. So a ream is like what, 500 sheets? So a box of a ream. So you're talking 5,000 pieces of paper. I can go through a box a week, uh, which I order off of Staples. I have it shipped right to my house. Uh, I want to say a box costs me around 50 or $60. So I'm having a box a week. But remember, every ream has effectively made me $300. So every ream that I've used. So to get a box of them. Uh, you know, five of them in a box. Is that what they come to? Five, eight, something like that in a box for 50 bucks. Is, it's it's inconsequential. Um, right. And then your gasoline, obviously, for a vehicle. And uh, you your, your printers require, and I tell people this too, and I'll tell your audience this. If you're going to do this and you're going to go out and buy, buy a printer, number one, buy a laser printer because they're efficient and they're fast. Uh, number two, don't buy the printer based on the price of the printer. Buy the printer based on the price of the toner. <laughs> so go shop <laughs> around for what has good toner prices and then buy that printer, regardless of the printer cost, because the printer will run forever. These printers are workhorses. Um, but the toner, if you buy one that has expensive toner, because you're going to be replacing the toner often. But if you mm -hmm. find one that has a really inexpensive toner, that's your printer. And I so I go through a toner a week and uh, um the drum, a drum a month. And the drums are about $25. The toner for me, I want to say they cost about $10 a cartridge, a toner for the brothers that I'm using. So again, it, when you, when you mathematically get a hundred sheets of paper is it's basically, I could mathematically tell you that I get a dollar a piece of paper I print. If I, if, if you're we're talking about loans, way more than that, if we're talking about like those estate forms, but if we're just talking mm -hmm. loans, I could calculate it down to I get a dollar for every piece of paper I print. And that's good money. So, so it's inconsequential. The, t the toner, the gas, the paper, it's completely inconsequential. You could be horrible at counting and you're still coming out ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're you should do a daily inventory. You should do that. Don't, but I'm just telling you, you you could be horrible at it because the profit margin is so high. That's what a high margin. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay, okay. And uh, speaking of that accounting piece, uh, some people may be wondering, like, in your opinion, what's the best uh, business structure for a notary business? You know, some people may do the sole proprietorship. Some people might want to do the LLC route. You might have a select group of people that may even want to go the escort route. In your opinion, which one is the best setup? So, yeah, that's a great question. So it depends on what level you're going to come in at or where you're going to find yourself. The mm -hmm. short answer would always be get an LLC. But if, especially if you're going to have, because you can run them under that one LLC. But initially, let's say you're working a job. I'm going to assume most people, you've got a job. And right. you're going to dabble in this to see if it works or not. So just do self-employed. You know, you're going to get, you're going to, we already know you can reduce the self-employment tax. You're going to get 1099 by, um, you know, if you have one of these vendors, uh, or you are contracted with a big nationwide title company like Amrock, they're going to 1099 you. And so that's going to be known that that money was made. But you'll be able to offset that one with that reduction, that 15% reduction. And two, you are already, you're more than likely already paying overage in your taxes. So that's not a bad option. If you're just like, I'm going to dabble in this. That's what I would do. If you are like, nope, I'm going to do it. I'm doing, I'm going to copy Mark's business in its entirety. Go get an LLC <laughs> uh, so that you can protect your assets and get and get general liability. Okay, when I say 
a notary just if you're just a notary dabbler you can get an errors and omissions policy a small policy that costs it's almost like again it's inconsequential i think like 60 dollars covers you for four years so it's inconsequential but if you're running a business like i am i carry general liability insurance i carry a million dollars of general liability um which you can get on like next insurance or where um like thirty dollars a month but that covers me in case anything goes kaput in case I get in an accident and somebody's like, oh, well, he was on his way to go do a, a loan, you know, or go do this and meet a client. OK, well, you see my insurance, you know, so just cover those bases. That's it. But again, very, very co considering the daily revenues that we take in, that is a very inconsequential number. Mm hmm. Got you. Got you. OK, so like uh, normally uh, some people want to take the side off the word side hustle. And just become like a full-time hustler so i asked like what's the full-time potential of this trader business but like you just said like 500 dollars a day if you do it right so obviously you can do this full-time so i'm actually gonna remix that question and ask you uh what do you feel like some things someone should have in place if they do want to do this full-time uh so you definitely want working transportation um maybe even backup transportation. Now that backup doesn't have to be a another vehicle. It can be a moped. I don't know, depending on where you are, uh, it can be a moped in Florida. Um, it, in Michigan, it might, you might need a car, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this time of year, but right. a backup, I would say have a backup. So that way you don't find yourself out of business. Um, mm -hmm. But you're gonna want your printers and you're gonna want a scanner and a computer most people have a computer in a car. So you're kind of half of your overhead is kind of already covered. So from mm -hmm. there, the next thing that you would want to do is you want to have uh, that ambition or the resolution that I'm going to go get contracts from people. Now that's pretty easy to do um, because there's a lot of them. So you just have to do, it's like call it doing your homework, go do your homework, get contracted with vendors, reach out to them, give them your credentials and um, have your price sheets in order, you know, basically do your homework. I do, like I said, I do it to turnkey because it takes, it took me a long time to do all this, to figure this stuff out. But that would just depend on the person's, their individual ambition level. So if you were like I did and you're like, all right, I'm just going to find every contract I can get and I'm going to put my Google <laughs> listing up and I'm going to Ha and you go out and do that, you could find yourself within a couple of months fully operational, generating. And again, demo there's demographics to consider. If you are in, um, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of Oklahoma, you know, on a cow pasture, you might not get a lot of work. But if you are in a town where there's people that are going in and out of restaurants and Walmarts and everything every day, you're good. There's enough people that. So that's what I tell people consider the population density. Um, mm -hmm of where you're at and again that of course is completely out the window when we start talking about online but you're going to want to have some familiarity with how to get the online client acquisition so and i could teach that but uh and that's available i mean there's the, it's the kind of the same thing that works for most businesses works for this business it's there might be some things that are niche specific for the most part if you have a good understanding how how to run one business you can run another one very very similarly Cool, cool. Okay. So um, we're about to start wrapping up the podcast, but I always ask my guests if they have any questions that they want to hit me with about uh, what I do, my brand, or just like any questions. But uh, my audience has banned me from uh, asking this. They don't want to hear like, hey, what, am, what motivates you to start a Side Hustler Society podcast? Because <laughs> uh, they've heard it a few times. They say, Elijah, like they can't ask that question. They got to ask something else. So is there, is there a question you want to hit me with? Yeah, I can't ask that question. Okay. So my question would be, what inspired you to write the book? Mm, the Anatomy of Financial Success. Yes. What inspired me to write that? I feel like the, well, I feel like this, but if you look at the outcomes that we see, this is clearly the case. The public school system has a uh, failed young adults when it comes to personal finance in general, because they don't take a lot of things into consideration. But for one thing, they don't give you just the standard information that you need. But on the other side, they don't really account for your personality type because there's certain tactics and information that will work for one person, it won't work for another and vice versa. 
So what motivated me to write The Anatomy of Financial Success is to uh, show you which of the six personality types that are out there that you are. Then from there, you can find out what's the best budgeting style for you. What's the best type of uh, income that motivates you to make money? And then from the from that point to any future information that you absorb when it comes to personal finance, you have somewhere to put that information like, oh, this will work great for me. Oh, that's not going to really be my style. So you can effectively take control of your financial destiny because as it stands, we're just thrown out there and it's kind of like rolling the dice that we're going to succeed because we don't have the tools and perspective we need to succeed. So that's what motivated me to write the anatomy of financial. Yeah, that's a great idea. What a great concept. I never even really thought about that, but I think we all kind of know and we talked about it briefly before that like an MLM, if you're an extrovert, you might do okay with it, but I'm an introvert. It's not it's not gonna work for me. But I'm very good with technical stuff. So I'm very good at looking at something and going and giving a breakdown of it. So um that's uh that's really neat that, that that's the kind of book you wrote because that is that's definitely unique to the industry um as far as breaking that down and i agree too the public school system uh not really good for boys in general i think boys are just uh, they're i think they're very physical they're very hands-on and the school's very sit here and listen and i don't want to listen <laughs> um but you know and, and i but i think i just said this the other day that the hardest thing about getting into any business this business or probably any business is that I actually had to unlearn a lot of stuff that I learned that I was just told and, and kind of just thought and believed I had to unlearn that and realize that this isn't how money works and this isn't how the market works. And um, because on the outside, looking at it outside, like for, like from an employee standpoint, there's no way in the world a notary should be making two or three times what a nurse is making. Shouldn't work that way, but it does work that way in the marketplace. So because the market pays what something is worth, what the value or the perceived value of it is. And that's it. And nobody tells you that. They don't tell you that in nursing school. <laughs> so you probably quit. <laughs> yeah, they'd be staffless pretty fast. They'd be staffless pretty fast. If you if you were in nursing school and they said, by the way, you can go down, two doors down, get a notary stamp and and, and a couple, couple directory listings and run circles around <laughs> <laughs> they probably have uh not just nurses quitting but the supervisor would keep hearing the same reason they're leaving he or she would probably leave too and do it <laughs> I, i'm missing out yeah that so it is it's, it's good it's a fantastic opportunity um it's a good what i like too about the notary is that it's a good um it's like a gateway drug so you mm. could be run some other kind of service or business and just adding that on can get you can, can polarize your business a little more. Um, a good example of that, and I gloss it over in the book, but would be like an insurance business. If you're running some kind of insurance business, which are good models, you obviously have to be good at sales with them, but you can use that as kind of a lead magnet. So just throwing that out there but um right right because a lot of people that do taxes are also uh, like uh, do notaries too yep hmm. that's okay. a common thing you'll commonly if you drive down the road look you'll see taxes and notary and uh, i do it the opposite i do notary and then i did taxes and i will tell you if we could talk about it brief i know we're wrapping up but uh, taxes are nowhere near as hard as they seem they seem like everybody's paying that's where the money is, is because paying somebody like me to do something that the computer's actually doing the work i'm not doing the work <laughs> the computer's doing it all for me i'm just stuck and you're paying for that so that's how it works the credentialing for taxes is the same thing it's, it's it's not complicated there's several tiers of it i talk about it in the book uh there's several tiers of tax of, of doing taxes that I mean, I got a I got a friend who, who's a an EA and a rolled agent makes a half a million a year taxes and no college, no nothing. Just the guy you can you can learn to be a, an enrolled agent. You can do that home online. You know, so it's uh, <laughs> you know, and then go put yourself out there. You know, that's a conversation for a whole other day. But it's right. it exists. It definitely exists. It's something that's that that real money can be made in. But but yeah, that's the. That's the thing if you, you'll see if you look, you know, and 
you'll probably be looking for it now, but you'll see like insurance and notary or taxes and not and that's why the UPS does it too, because the, the UPS store, they're actually hardly ever there and they usually have very bad reviews, but it's just like one more thing to kind of get, you know, it's one more lead magnet that they're using is all it is. It's a marketing trick, you know? Right. <laughs> throw, throw right under the bus. <laughs> but but yeah. maybe that'll answer somebody's question. If somebody's like, well, how can I compete with my UPS store or Amscot or there's a couple places like that? I'll tell you how, because you're personalizing your service and they aren't. They are Walmarting their service and people hate Walmart and people love personal touch. So and that's that's how it works. That's why it works. Yeah. I mean, it, that's something to take in consideration. Like a lot of this stuff just it's not so hard. Like I I don't know why people have this like mental block of a lot of this stuff being hard. But it's really not. It just comes down to like, hey, let me just commit to sitting down and setting it up and doing it. Jump in, take some baby steps. You know, as, as long as you're consistent, as long as you take keep taking those baby steps before you know it, they, they're giant steps. And it's like, wow, I can't believe that I did all this. And no different than anything else. Right. So, Mark, for people who want to get uh, more of you, uh, where can they uh, contact you? Some people are probably wondering more about your course and your book. So if you want to talk a little more about that, like feel free. And we'll, we'll leave links to yeah. anything you okay. say in the show notes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So my main business that I run here physically in Port Orange is called LegalDocNotary.com. That's the website, um, which is Noble Notary. So that's just the website to Noble Notary. Everything can be linked to from there. So my course is linked in there. Um, but we do have, so our, our course is called Notary Prosperity Academy, Google Notary Prosperity Academy. It would probably be the first thing that shows up. I would hope it would be, um, but it will be. But uh, you could go to a legal doc prep and the Notary Prosperity, the landing page for that is in there. Um, the actual website for it is like marksias.mykajabi. That's a long story I won't go into. I actually bought the name Notary Prosperity Academy and I'm having a hang up with Cloudflare but in the meantime, I've had so much promotion done with Mark Sias, Mike Javi that I'm like, let's just leave it the way it is. Um, right. Most we'll just click links anyway. So um, and then uh, so on my book is it's called A Golden Pen. I wrote that with my wife and it's available everywhere books are. And if you're not a reader or listener, it's on Audible. Um, it's Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, all of them. You can get it in paperback um, if you write me a letter or send me an email. I'll send you a paper, a signed paperback if you want. You know? <clears throat> cool. Cool. All right, Mark. So we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude this episode. Everyone, we want to thank you for watching this episode of the Side Hustler Society uh, podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can give us a thumbs up for this uh, video. It helps out with the algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And if you could leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts, That'd be uh, greatly appreciated. With that being said, we'll see you in the next episode. Be safe. Be profitable, everyone. This episode may be over, but your hustling journey has just started. Visit the SideHustleSociety.com to access all links and resources mentioned in the show that will help you on your hustler's journey.